Okay, we're going to be demonstrating how to get rid of uh, how to set up the color killer on vintage screen TV. I turn the color all the way up so you can see what essentially is what we call color snow. That's snow, and you can this is what snow sounds like for you folks who haven't heard, haven't done much vintage stuff. Okay, so what we're going to do is just a kind of a white noise, and you can see the color. Now there's an adjustment on the back of the CR of the set called Color Killer, and basically you adjust this until the color snow gets away. So I've got it fully counterclockwise now. That's max color. Now I'm going to turn it clockwise until the color snow goes to black and white. There you go, black and white snow. So that's the correct adjustment for uh, a color killer. Uh, you could probably leave it wide open as fully counterclockwise since generally there's no over-the-air broadcast and the whole idea behind Color Killer was to allow you to receive a weak signal. You might have some snow, but it wouldn't be, if it, and, it, and if it was in black and white, you wouldn't have color specks in it. So it's kind of just an old adjustment for an old problem. But anyway, that's how you do it. Now we'll go to uh, we'll do a little demonstration of... Now we're going to go over how to uh, adjust color in fine tuning. Okay, first of all, I'll turn the fine tuning down a little bit. I mean, the color down. Turn my brightness up. What you see here is what I call sound bars. These, this noise in the picture correlates roughly to the sound that's coming through at the same time. Now, I have an adjustment on this set right here. That is the fine tuning. Often you'll have the fine tuning incorporated into some knob around the main tuning uh, channel selector, but not in this case. So what we're going to do is now adjust the fine tuning the way it should be. And typically, uh, here I'm going to turn it clockwise and you see the picture deteriorates and again that this beat frequent this beat sound back in here has to do with the uh, with the sound if I keep turning it gets it loses sync and we lose picture so now I'm going to back off the tuning and the correct way to do it is tune it until jet that just goes away and the worminess goes away there that's about a perfect adjustment there's no more noise no more sound noise in the picture I'll turn it again I'll go clockwise you'll see the sound noise will start popping in there if I turn it up you can that are hard to pick up well stands by your side trusty I'm not gonna go into it but with each modulation of sound there's more noise in the picture back off till that's gone completely. If I continue to back off, we go into a black and white picture. If I keep going this, it'll actually get smeary, but I don't want to do that because it's not really good for your fine tuning to screw around with it like this. You can actually strip some gears in the fine tuner. So that's a black and white. Color comes in and you want to keep tuning this to get the best color without the sound bars right there. It also helps your video response to get as sharp a picture as you can get. Anyway, there's the basic setup of how to adjust a color killer on the back of the set. So you have no, no color confetti here. And you still get a good color picture. Like I said, the color you could just leave that color color wide open. It really wouldn't matter because most people are running some kind of a cable to a... Um, matching transformer to the back of the set. Let me talk about that real quick so we're clear on what that's all about. I'm using an antenna and picking up an over-the-air picture. I won't go into the details of how that works, but it does. But typically, let me see if I can get my, uh, get some light over here. Typically you'll have a, uh, something that looks like this on the back of a set and it's a, for a 300 ohm input and you typically run a twin lead antenna here back in the day well nowadays most of your 
outputs have some kind of a 75 ohm output like this on the back of this VCR. So in order to connect up this to this, you need this, which is a matching transformer. This attaches here to these two leads. Then you just use your regular old um, cable that you can buy anywhere at Radio Shack, or generally comes with a with a audio equipment like this. Well, not anymore, because we're getting away from these RF outputs on DVDs. In fact, this is an old DVD player, so that brings a whole nother problem. But if you have one of these and you want to connect it to this, you need this. Without this, you get quite a loss of the signal strength from here to here, and the signal strength that's coming out of here is not all that great in the first place. So you really don't want to have a lot of losses. Unlike digital TVs, analog TVs can reproduce pictures with crummy RF signals. They'll just have snow. They won't, you know. So you get the gambit of full snow to perfect picture, and anywhere in between, depending on that signal strength. There are some adjustments you can make, like the color killer, by the way, was right here. But there's also an AGC adjustment here, that's automatic gain control. I don't think you can read it from here, I can't quite see it. But inside there's a pot that you use to adjust the AGC. And basically you just turn that pot when you have a weak signal, or a strong signal. Give a strong signal adjust that pot to you, you just start to lose sync and the picture gets overly dark and then back off a little bit. Then on a weak signal, you should have more gain applied to the amplifiers in the, in, the, in the set to make up for it. And a strong signal, the AGC won't swamp, won't have too much gain, and end up clipping and causing all kinds of problems. I'm not going to AGC. I just want to demonstrate color, color, and fine-tuning for this particular video. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.